Hello everyone, this is Gally and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Your Dragon. Today we're going to learn how to make tails. I've started with a sketch of a normal western dragon without legs and I wanted to show you for example how the tail starts, like where the base is. It's connected to the hips and it goes behind, behind, well yeah, behind and beneath the legs. And this is a normal dinosaur leg. I used it as inspiration because, well, they're the biggest reptiles around ever. They looked amazing and, well, they show us very interesting anatomy facts. For example, the tail wouldn't move up and down, it would move side to side. And if it did move up and down, it wouldn't be like this, all curved. That's a different kind of animal that could do that. But um, this is the dinosaur tail. So it wouldn't move up and down, it would just move side to side. This is important for big dragons that have their wings connected to it, that it will help them fly, and they could also hit other animals with it. So the purpose of this dinosaur tail is to hit other creatures. And that's what I find interesting for them. They gave them balance, they gave them everything. So I'm going to add some details, for example a spade and some spikes, and think about how it would look on my character. But what I also want to share with you is that if you're going to make a design that has uh, well different things on the tail, don't go overboard. Try to figure out why you want it that way. For example, the spade would be for attacking other animals or defending itself or I don't know, preparing a house for winter or you, you give it a name. The spikes could be for defense, it could be on the side, on top. Just don't add like a thousand spikes and make them look strange. Just for example, if you want a lot of spikes, look at bearded dragons. See how many they have and why and where they're placed. Every time you do something and you design, try to figure why you do it. When, once I had a, a dragon, it was a while back, in 2009 I think, and it had a tail like this. It was so curved, so strange, so thin at the end, and it had a big, huge spike. This is anatomically impossible, because the animal wouldn't be able to lift that thing, or, well, make a functioning tail out of it. It would probably just entangle itself in its legs. That would be so uncomfortable. So if you want to add, for example, a scorpion spike on the tail, that's all right. And remember, it could be curved, like this, before he attacks. So that's another tip. If you want another thing to be on the tip of your dragon's tail, just think about the design. I have to repeat this because I didn't think about it before. It didn't help. For example, if I wanted a blade, I would put it at the end, like this, make it big. But it would make more sense to put it before, because the tail muscle will be able to hold it up, just like this. So if it starts there in the tip, it would be difficult for him to lift it. Some dragon designs I've seen have that, and they look good. It's not a problem, it's just I like to think about what I do before I do it. Another example would be using different animals for reference. I have my own book here. It's called Science of Creature Design by Teriel Whitletch. And she has three books or four. And I find them quite interesting. She's done work before for bigger companies like Star Wars and such. And their creatures are amazing. Now I'm using other kinds of tails, for example a gecko. That has a thicker tail. And I will use other animals. In this case it could be a smaller tail with feathers, like a parrot or a feathered dinosaur. Remember you can pause the video anytime to see the other examples longer because I'm going to jump to other designs. This time you can, I don't know, copy another animal like an iguana. They will have longer tails, whiplash. They could attack other animals with it, poke their eyes or give them more balance and such. This is akin to a dinosaur tail. Even think of a crocodile when you do stuff like this. Now, imagine you can want to, to add a fish to it. Why not? Your dragon wants to move in water. Then add some lion tail fins. And even the spikes on the upper part could be resembling the fins of the lionfish, right? So these are so many designs 
we can make. I can't make them all. But I want you to think about designs you can make. Like, be original with your creations. Like, if you want to add a feline tail, it wouldn't start on the bottom, it would start on top. It would give him balance, it would make him lithe. Or lethal, however you pronounce it. And you can even add a wolf, for example, or a horse. Remember, tails give personality to your creature. So a tail is not just a tail. It gives a personality, it gives emotions away, because animals communicate with them, just as humans communicate with our expressions. And you can see, for example, how the tail starts and the size of the base of the tail, like a chameleon's. If it's curled up like this, it could help, I don't know, climb trees. If it's extended, it's for another reason, like if it has spikes, it's another reason. Think of every detail you make as in something that would help your character. It would make him do something, attack, defend. Think about it and just incorporate it to your design. That's a good tip I can give you, because I've been learning how to, I don't know, make more expressions in your characters. For example, I like to give the example of cats. When a cat has been scared or it's upset, he would puff his tail. He would make it look like this. Like a dragon would look a little strange with a puff tail, but I'm showing you to give some emotion to your character. You can make him even look happy with a tail curled up. That means he's safe and happy. And that's a tail of a cat, but you can also try to do it with a dragon. Like erase that little tail and make it a dragon tail. Make him look happy with that. Like, like so, for example, he's just standing there, right? But how to make your standing dragon happy will curl his tail up. And to have a different variation, <laughs> you can make him have a tail down, which could mean he's scared or protective. And, well, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you liked, please subscribe. More to come. Hope you liked it. Bye-bye.